The Reading Concerto in B minor is one of my favorite student concertos to teach. There are many opportunities to create large phrases, to use whole bows, and also uh, focus on changes in tone color. The first phrase in the piece, starting in measure five, is eight measures long. I think it's important to consider whether or not you want to crescendo to the lowest notes in this phrase or decrescendo. Somehow we should follow the line in the music with our dynamic intensity. The ending of that phrase um, is left a little bit up in the air like a question mark. I think it makes sense to avoid playing. That's a little out of place. Uh, the next phrase in the piece That phrase is much of the same, except the ending of that phrase sounds much more final and triumphant. So we could end with a little bit more volume in that phrase. Measure 21, the next phrase, uh, starts to sound a little bit more gentle and calm compared to the beginning of the piece. I think there's no question that that uh, high B natural on the E string is our goal point in that entire phrase and that we should plan to end uh, somewhere in the upper half of the bow for the piano that's coming up. No, it's not that kind of accent. Why don't we do something a little bit more padded and subtle? Accents aren't all created the same. We could use a little bit more bow with each accent. Now we've arrived at measure 33, the forte risoluto spot, and we have accents over the quarter notes. I really like hearing these accents as a, a, a fast bow speed and vibrato accent. Um, that sounds very triumphant, uh, heroic, bold that way. Um, I think a lot of students confuse accents with dots. There's no need to play. I think that sounds less bold. And uh, the next couple measures, 35 and 36, have no accents. So this is a really neat spot in that we go from very bold, heroic playing to more smooth singing playing. One of my favorite moments is in bar 44, where we have just a, a snippet of a chromatic scale, A, A sharp, B, e. and I think that's, that's one of the high points in the whole piece. Um, so we can plan to use ever increasing amounts of bow on each of those chromatic scale notes. As we 
work our way back to the recapitulation, there are some uh, really cool intertwining arpeggio sections that interact well with the piano part. So I'm talking about measure 54. Um, if we haven't already crescendo to the lower end of the instrument, this is a perfect opportunity to sink into that very thick, uh, gruff G string sound. So we can call this the recap, or the recapitulation. I'd like to look a little bit at measure 72. Um, we have a lot of varied bow strokes in this measure. Um, and some of the students I've heard play this uh, uh, start to play quite unevenly here. Often I'll hear the slurs rushing a little bit, and the separate notes almost invisible. try really hard to uh, keep the left hand rhythm consistent in the slurs and perhaps use even a little bit more bow for the separate eighth notes. reading could have ended this piece, right? Have a nice day. Uh, but instead, uh, he expands this B minor chord um, into this big arpeggio that goes up to the E string and back down. on the third beats of the measure add a sense of urgency um, and the elongation of this B minor chord uh, really brings the piece back down into this very uh, serious, somber, uh, almost uh, uh, angsty uh, effect that we started the piece with. Wh whenever I work on the reading concerto with students and most other pieces as well, I'll ask, um, how does this piece make you feel? Is it a happy piece? Is it a sad piece? Um, obviously, the reading concerto is in B minor, and so you know the uh, stock answer that you're going to get is it's a sad piece. But then I think it's important to delve a little bit deeper. What kind of sad is it? Is it a I dropped my ice cream cone on the ground type of sad? Is it a crocodile tears type of sad? Is it my cat is sick today type of sad, or uh, the loss of a family member, or uh, uh, a dream-like type of sadness, or something else entirely? Uh, sometimes the answers that you get uh, are really interesting. Um, and I think it's really important uh, for students of any age uh, to connect uh, feelings, affects, emotions, uh, to what's happening in the music. Without that connection, we've got no hope of playing uh, musically or creatively. Sometimes it's a great idea to make up a story, a narrative, with a student um, and uh, see how that story changes and develops as the music changes from the beginning of the piece to the end. It doesn't have to be coherent, but I think it's a great idea to match up actions feelings, images, uh, to what's happening in the music uh, in each phrase. There are a couple other great resources for studying the reading concerto in B minor. There's a recording by Itzhak Perlman, 
as well as a wonderful masterclass series by Zachar Brun.